اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم انا اتینا کل کوثر فصل لربك وانہر ان شانئک هو الابتر my today's uh, topic in the series of cerebral palsy before that we have done uh, on the what and what not to do principles of treatment cerebral palsy third lecture was the cerebral palsy patient assessment and today i am uh, discussing with you the management of spasticity in cerebral palsy and my more concern will be on the botox therapy and the end i will present three cases with live demonstration of the botox therapy which i have already done and uh, it will be there so next so here it is a usually a multidisciplinary approach in cerebral palsy one person cannot deal everything of the cerebral palsy initially we have to diagnose the patient whether it is cerebral palsy or not a cerebral palsy and then we have to set the priorities in the cerebral palsy in which the orthopedic surgeon comes at the sixth level before that there are problems of speech hearing vision and intellect there's these mostly are dealt by the pediatric neurologist and when the child is not able to sit or stand and walk then there is a consultation for the movement disorders and in the movement disorders there is a team approach again and the main role is of the orthopedic surgeon and the physiotherapist and when there is a little bit disabilities to improve the function of the patient we need a botulinum toxin or the surgery and that is the decision of again a group work the multidisciplinary team usually include a physiotherapist occupational therapist orthotist botulinum clinic neurosurgeon sometimes and the orthopedic surgeon most of the times this is the multidisciplinary approach every time you need a consultation of these people and the pediatric neurologist has the central pivotal role since the beginning for the diagnosis i already discussed with you the last uh, lecture we need to have an, a detailed birth history developmental history presentation at the time we it comes to you and the gait analysis most of the time the gait analysis laboratory is not available so we use the observational gait analysis when a child comes and enters in your room you start your observation of that patient and then you decide for the gmfc score which is five levels we will discuss little bit and the detailed physical examination regarding dynamic contractures fixed contractures disability what is he is having and the what over the function we need to improve him and then the advanced imaging if we need we can use that so objective of the treatment are mostly to identify a specific problem what is the problem with this what is the that movement disorder which you need to improve him and that needs a clinical analysis and once you have done that then it is the plan effective management effective management includes a medical treatment surgical treatment rehabilitation orthosis and the rehabilitation particularly has the most important role in the cerebral palsy management and uh, here is the detailed evolution we have already discussed which contains to discuss uh, to know about the gait of the patient posture of the patient and this is the clinical observation which we do because we don't have the get laboratory i always do a picture and the videos of these patients and then assess not on the single visit but multiple visits assess the what is the problem with him don't embark on the surgery med or the uh, botulinum toxin before you definitely decide what is the problem what you can improve and then you also need a clinical test like this and this test and if you have availability of the gait laboratory you can do it but you should have a knowledge of the gait laboratory then is the assessment of the gross motor functions and contractures in which there are five levels level 1 is the independent walker independent he can do anything with he can carry bus he have minor disabilities or deformities in the feet or something uh, something in the knee uh, like as just an spastic contracture and the, this grade 2 is little bit assistance is required but he is independent and sometimes he is okay sometimes he need support but grade 3 or class 3 when he need a wheelchair which he himself is using or the crutches and grade 4 the motorized wheelchairs are motorized things you need they need the support and grade 5 is when they are 
total body involvement they are not even able to sit and the botox therapy particularly medical therapy works in the grade 1 to grade 3 a patient which comes to you with the grade 3 you have to improve at least to the grade level uh, level 1 and there there is a, a other parameter also used to be consideration so spasticity in cerebral palsy has, we have a multiple options one objective is to control the hypertonicity or spasticity and to improve the function. And this hypertonicity is not only because of this spastic cerebral palsy, it can be because of dystonia, it can be because of the autonomous disorders and the bladder problems in which you can also use the Botox. And these are the system which we use. Sometimes we use a physical therapy, we use an orthosis to improve or to maintain the corrected position with the Botox, particularly in the night sprint, we say AFO we give, then occupational therapy to improve his functions and the Botox therapy which usually gives to, to weaken the spastic muscle. And then it is not only Botox, but the rehabilitation post Botox and pre-Botox to improve the remaining function of the other muscles. And then the Beclon phenic pumps are also available, which are part particularly total body involvement patient. And the chemo denervation is the Botox therapy, particularly it is called. And sometimes when you decide it, after the age of five and six years, that now it is a time to prevent the structural deformities to develop or the persistent or contractures to develop. You do the tendon lengthening and tendon transfers. And in very few cases, you involve the neurosurgeons. You involve the neurosurgeon for particularly dorsal rhizotomy. One slide I have used it because it is often asked a question, what is dorsal rhizotomy? I will discuss on this for one slide. So spasticity control uh, also need a medical treatment. Spasticity when it is generalized like in TV, we usually use the baclofenic, which is uh, FDA approved drug. But, but Dretolene is not nowadays used, but sometimes the Dazipam and Tizinidine is also used. But most commonly, Lyoresol is available in, in, in Beclin is also available. That is called the Beclofenic Sodium. And when the spasticity is localized, it is only in the ankle, only in the foot, only in the, uh, in the wrist, then it is better to, uh, to give the botulinum toxin. And you can multiply, uh, do the multiple times Every, after every three, six, four to six months period to improve the remaining function and decision, particularly for decision of the surgery, whether this surgery of the lengthening or the fractional lengthening will improve or not improve, then we use the botulinum toxin. And the surgical treatment, you know, fractional lengthening of the muscle. That is the only to cut the fascia, not, not the muscle. Last, in last lecture, I already discussed it. And the ten, tendon lengthening. Tendon lengthening is particularly done when there is a fixed contracture. If it is a dynamic contracture, we do the fractional lengthening. And when the elder child is there, there is a pace plane of valgus deformity. You do the osteotomy, you do the fuance, you do the supracondylar osteotomy. In particularly, elder case, which are not able to stain, if you read the Miller's book, he has done the extension or recovery of osteotomy in the knee, at least he will be able to stain the walk. And then the dorsal rhizotomy. In these is particularly in very serious cases, which are TBI, in which your general uh, medical treatment and these uh, botas are not able to work, then you do the dorsal rhizotomy. And in certain cases, we, you have done the uh, CDH particularly and developed arthritis, you can do the arthroplasty as well. Then is the dorsal rhizotomy. Few words about the dorsal rhizotomy. This is the patient which is severe contracture at the perineum. He's not able to maintain the perineum. Even he's not able to sleep because of this fixed contracture of the knee joints and the ankle joint. We don't need to make this child to walk up but at least his disability can be reduced. His spasticity can be reduced. His dislocation, which is eminent at the hip joint because of this contracture can be reduced. We can improve his perineal hygiene and to improve long-term quality of life. It's not the temporary, but permanent. Here we open the dorsal spine. We selectively cut the nerve endings, which are is creating an spasticity, root, rootless, which are creating spasticity in the muscles, particularly sensory, which reflexes, because when you touch the body, he immediately contracts the muscles. Their sensory rootless or the motor rootless are being cut and producing the abnormal signals in the uh, particular in the contraction. This is the dorsal rhizotomy. This is sufficient for the student to speak in the examination. It is okay.
Now I will go to the botulium. What is the benefit of the botulium toxins? And the it is called mostly chemo denervation because it works at the nerve endings in the muscle. When you inject a diluted botulium toxin in the muscle, it spreads and it chemically denervates the nerve endings. And we, there are A to G six, uh, seven type of the botulium toxins available, but Toxin A, which is called Botox, is mostly used in the chemo denervation in spastic disorders. And we use particularly in dynamic spasticity, reduce the spasticity, reduce the tonicity, and most profound process. Advantage is it is the selective or focal effect it has. It improves the passive and active range of motion. How do you improve it? This itself will not improve, but the rehabilitation after injection therapy, after one week, you start the weak muscles to improve and the, the strong muscle you have already weakened that muscle so it will improve the gait it will improve the function and and it has a very safe wide safety margin and improve the gait and function because he's a minor equinus contracture you have given a botox in the calf he will then he can use the arthrosis in the night and the daytime he can be able to without arthrosis and this will increase the extensor muscles and he will improve the walk and you can repeat it. And this will also help you what will be the effect after botulinum, uh, after surgery. So this is a pre-operative assessment as well. As we, in our student days, we used to apply below knee plaster and above knee plaster to understand whether this is surgery for the hemistring or surgery for the uh, uh, calf will help post-operatively after, after that or not. So this is also taken an advantage of this because this is a temporary effect of the three to four months. So it has a very safe, safety margin and it will, uh, uh, nerves will regenerate after some time. So this is indicate, this is, these springs indicate a cerebral palsy patient where are multiple springs are available. So here is an spring which is in the calf muscle, it is a hemistry muscle. At the same time, there is rectus femoris is also tight. And sometimes it is not, it is not right. When you weaken the hamstring, this may become a strong. So you have to decide whether I will have to do surgery with the Botox therapy, whether I will lengthen this fractional lengthening of a hamstring. Maybe he develop retrospective contracture. In the same way is the, uh, the for the gastrocnemius muscles. So which muscle you need to do? Only gastrocnemius or gastrocnemius both? And gastrocnemius both, then you do the TOL. And if when you do only release the gastrocnemius, then you uh, you do only the uh, gastro uh, fractional lengthening. So these are the multiple types of the hamstring contracture, which that shows in details in the TBI, where, how these children perform with the multiple contracture of hamstring, another way, W sitting, short stride. So these are the little uh, indications about the hamstring contracture. Hamstring contracture can produce a crouch gait. It can be associated with a jump gait. And here is the test for the popliteal angle. So chemo denervation help us to relax the overactive muscles for the short time. So during this time, a targeted therapy is very necessary to implement to stretch the much shortened muscle, which you, which you have given, already given the uh, Botox, and stiffness of the joint, which may be a fixed joint, which needs uh, further extension or release of this contract and the improve the weak muscle power. So rehabilitation program is during post therapy is very important to improve his walking, his function, his grip in the hand and the self care and the perineal management. So indication for the uh, Botox is effective treatment of the numerous movement disorder. It is not only the spasticity of cerebral palsy of dystonia, but it is also used in autonomous disorders. It is also used most commonly nowadays, it is used by the beauticians, from physician to surgeons as well. They are using this for the beautification of the uh, 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 face creases to improve and look like a young lady after uh, 20 years and 70 years. So it is multi, very widely used uh, drug for reducing the spasticity and improve the function. So it is, it is pharmacological effect is to blockade the nerve endings which release acetylcholine. So it works on the acetylcholine, it blocks the nerve endings and that is temporary. It also acts on the autonomic disorder. It is used very commonly in autonomic disorders. And nowadays there are multiple 
literature is also available in which if it is even used in the uh, tv as well in the uh, younger children to relax the calf muscles in which uh, and they use in the color foot treatment a very long duration of effect of the botox of 3 month and 4 months how the reversal of this action occurs so when during this long paralyzed uh, paralyzed period there are new sprout formation of the nerve endings appears during the wean off of during the weaning of just as the the uh, effect of the botox is slowly weaning off the new sprouts are coming and there's new sprouts when the three after four months become the own new nerve endings for that muscles so it is the reversal phenomena of the botox uh, injections there are contraindication as well there are multiple general contraindication and everyone you know it should not be given in the hypersensitivity pregnancy phobia injections anticoagulant therapy certain psychological disorders and in the fixed contractures because it will not relax the fixed or structural contracture of the knee joint or ankle joint or an arthritis but the dynamic contracture and the patient which has recently received at least a gap should be of three months it should not be repeated before three months if you repeat before three months it may produce an anti antibodies and neutralizing antibodies so when you give the another dose it may not be effective so it is the it should not be given very frequently before three to four months of the first therapy then local complication i have already seen there is hematoma formation there is edema erythema ecchymosis and these local complication can be dealt with the ic but sometimes we give them a plaster cast for one to two weeks so that relieve this edema pain erythema ecchymosis and hyperesthesia which is local complication it sometimes in overdoses in certain children it produce a nausea fatigue and flu like symptom but i have never seen in my more than 200 cases of botox uh, maybe a develop but this local symptom i have seen but sometimes there is a unmasking of the weakness of the muscle cerebral spasticity is basically an spasticity but the muscle which is spastic it is not normal it is not normal because it is weak when you weaken further by the botox it unmasks its weakness and it will produce certain certain weaknesses after post injection therapies so when you give this butas you at least give them a good physical therapy of one to two months before and after that that is called rehabilitation treatment but systemic therapy is systemic overdose is very less in this very phase, phase drug this shows the multiple dosages as per calculations the dose calculation is in the in the this you can read in any book but this will be available also i will share on the slides i will share on the movie you can be go in details about the each muscles and the here is the in the lower limb muscles and dosage particularly has to be modified according to the weight of the patient maybe the high weight is high so you give larger dose and bulky patient likely duration of therapy if it is acute you can increase the dose if a muscle bulk is large you can increase the dose a number of muscles are more or few in few you can increase the dose in muscle a single muscle you can give the more ashworth score and the treatment and weaknesses you also and the inadequate responses with the previous therapy you can increase the dosage so these are the sites of the muscle where you have to inject inject in upper limb mostly there are two or three sites in the similar muscle when bulky muscle there are four side like in bicep which is when there is more strong contracture you give on the four sides otherwise it is usually two <laughs> or three sides availability here is the hamstrings and the adductor and the gracilis which, which you give the two or four three sides and the medial hemisphere lateral hemisphere lateral gastrocnemius medial gastrocnemius and the uh, uh, soleus where you inject i will discuss in detail when you comes to the sides so maximum dosage is 16 units per kilogram per patient maximum you can use in 60 kg child 400 units cannot use more than that it will be overdoses but we usually limit up to the uh, 10 years age child which is around 45 60 kg we limit to about 200 and you have to divide this doses as per muscle bulk here i usually calculate as the upper limb is the one fourth of the body weight lower limb is the uh, one third of the body weight one and the central trunk is the one third so one third one third one third 
and it means you have to calculate if you are want to give a 300 units so in lower limb you can give in small child of five or three years 100 to 150 or 200 units or not more than that so this is the simple calculations and in each muscle site or each muscle it should not be more than 50 units and dilution particularly we do two millimeter normal saline dilution so that a 30 units when you give it in the cell in the diluted form it looks like the 20 units so it will be easy for that and another thing is that the when you dilute in the 2 cc it will spread more in the muscles it will covers more nerve endings in the muscles so here in the uh, there is no controlled uh, trials available for the dosage therapy in which muscle can be but there are uh, 250 times doses ke baad bhi, there is no systemic evidences of the units but injection should not be more than 50 unit per site or in per muscle and it should not be repeated uh, uh, within three months so calculated dose should be as per weight and the size of the muscle and it is diluted in two millimeter preservators and the dosage is 5 to 10 kilogram per kg per muscle and body weight ke hisab se and total doses should not be in similar muscle but totally. I usually write down like this. I calculate the dose, write down these the total doses, calculation, and the muscles. Here the gastronomy muscle, the soleus, and pronator. This side I will show you in the video. I have given only 100 units. And this I keep in front of my eyes. So here is the 30, it means 60. 60 in the insulin syringe. But when you deliver 60 because 2 millimeter, 2 cc dilution, it is 30 units. 30, 30, 20, 20. 20 as per the muscle bulk we use but more not more than 50 units and not should be repeated more than uh, within three months and should not be more than 200 units in similar child so in toe walkers there are four locations toe walker there are four locations in the gastronomy eye these are one two three four in the heads it should not be given the tendon but it should be given the near the neuromuscular uh, neurotendinous junctions and in the soleus, because it is the central in the soleus, it should be just, uh, first dose should be given just below the medial head and then two centimeters, 1.5 centimeters, depending on the length of the child and in the soleus. So soleus in the central, but you must take, pull the plunger out to check if it, it should not be in the blood vessel. And then you inject. So soleus, two locations, four locations in the gastronomy and uh, it should be given. Here is the dosage typically five, to 10 units depending on the size of the child and the uh, and the weight of the child you can give in the heel card not in the heel card but gastronomous muscle or junction of the uh, the where there you find the more uh, nerves there most of the time some people give botox therapy with the ultrasounded guided to uh, to detect the nerve endings to detect the nerve endings and uh, nerves and then they inject there and uh, some people give with the EMG, but and some people give it the, with a sedation. And so in the irritable children, children's usually it is given in the general anesthesia. So crouch gait, crouch can be uh, with the usually uh, Darcy flexion ankle. This is called the crouch gait, and the dynamic mostly there is a dynamic knee contracture which usually use the crouch gait. And like as with toe walking children as well, particularly hypertonicity of dystonia. In, you can dystonia and dystonia you cannot do the surgery but you can do a botox therapy here uh, for the crouch guard there are multiple scales or criteria are available multiple tests are available okay, in which size in which position in which uh, uh, type of the uh, hemistring contracture you should give the usually said in the red r2 r2 means minus 70 from the neutral r1 is the first reflex where you find it 90 degrees so here is a dynamic contracture pop angle minus 70. You can inject the hemistrings here. In the, so another criteria. So this criteria you can read the Tudros criteria. Usually it is called the who have the moderately increased tone and severely increased tone. Most good candidate is when the contracture is below 70 minus 70. I mean to say. And then in the same, same times in the hemistring injection is distributed again into one to two centimeters along the length of medial hemistring, more, not more than 50, should not be repeated within three months. And if you don't find a response in one or two injections, then you need a surgical intervention that is called fractional lengthening, not the tendon lengthening, but fractional lengthening. So and when there is a scissor, when scissor is usually it is produced because of the gracilis muscle and adductor spasticity. I will show you patient in the, in the end. 
and in which there is a gracilis tightness and adductor tightness and the scissor in this you can inject in the muscles in adductors and the gracilis when you are injecting gracilis in the when you are injecting hamstring and adductors in different position so here is the test to differentiate between the uh, uh, between the contracture uh, of the gastrocnemius uh, of the gracilis and soleus where it should be done in extension when it is an extension, it may, may be because of gracilis or maybe because of the. But when you flex the knee, you have neutralized the gracilis and remaining content is adductors. So you must differentiate between with by the help test. And when there is a severe spastic contracture of the adductors, particularly in DBI, these patients are at risk for dislocations. In, and the, this candidate, if three years age or two years, you are not going to do the surgery because surgery is not indicated at this. So you give the Botox injections in the adductors and the gracilis to prevent the dislocation of hip. So monitoring is very, so adductor muscles are injected from the pubic symphysis into one to two centimeters area down. And again, is same repetition. If it is not uh, responding, you can do the adductor, ten, adductor open myotomy, not touching the nerve, and should not be repeated within three months. Evaluation of response must be examined after first of the uh, first visit after one month because of the irritability and these things removed. If you have applied the plaster, it has to be removed in the ten days or two weeks time. Then physical therapy must be with you to know with the problems and he, you can advise him the what assistance or what goals you need to be improved and then by you will they, they will so you will suggest them physiotherapy and further things so effective dose and dilutions there are multiple literatures available it is a safe drug four to ten units per muscle per kg you can give injection there are multiple studies with the 10 20 30 and they have found they found that all those results in improvement compared with the placebo with a group that received 20 units per kg per dose per muscle or per body weight, they must have greatest effect in relation to the receiving the similar doses. So give the optimum dose, give the good doses, maximum doses, in, but not the overdoses. So casting is also available, uh, literature is shows, and this was the question Saeed has asked me last time, okay, I do, the only serial casting and do, do they do improve? Yes, they do improve. There are multiple studies available only serial casting, serial casting with the combination of Botox therapy, and they found the combination of serial casting and the combination with the Botox is more effective. So clinical benefits, particularly to understand the progress and the benefit. This is the last slide. Then we will move to the movies. Injection CP must be known following variables. Selection of patient is very important effective of the large dose must be outcome. Long-term efficacy of botulinum therapy, long-term benefit of the botulinum toxin therapy, you must understand before embarking on the relative advantages and disadvantages you must know. Appropriate duration of therapy, how long you can give the three doses, four doses, five doses are lifelong, no lifelong, but if they when they are elder, then you can embark on the surgery and results you have already seen with the Botox therapy. Then early, early therapy before a degeneration appears. So here is the key point in the Botox therapy. This rarely cause a complication or significant adverse effect in the pediatrics. Pre-injection enzolytics and the topical anesthetics is, um, uh, is very much very beneficial to give the injections. In similar children and irritable children, you can you use the general anesthesia. I use only propofol and sometimes the ketamine and, and with the anesthetist. And meaningful assessment of the treatment outcome depends on the careful objective. What are your objective? What want you improve his function? You must be already clearly known this. Effect are seen up only up to three to four months. It must be repeated after four months or thereafter, but not before three months. And the plaster after injection is sometimes helpful to particularly to reduce the irritability, hematoma, swelling with this, they are one week uh, plaster is easy to uh, help him. So here is the case one. This was the three years old uh, uh, female child having the uh, spastic, the upper limb and lower limb, he, he, birth asphyxia. She is hemiplegic with significant dynamic contracture in the elbow, pronation and toe walker. But her pop angle was normal, right foot was equinus and silver costas was positive. This was the candidate for the uh, Bhutas therapy. And now clearly just I, you will listen the video. 
how you assess and how you will give. So this is the center cost less than GA extension may distribution. Are you listening? Inflation, it goes up. Hello? Lower yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listening. Dynamic temperature of the stroke. Yes, yes, but you partially of solar system. Okay. If you have the test center for this, after you can hold it in extension or you stretch, I will palpate the muscle. 60 units. Total 60 units. This is the muscle, medial head. This is the lateral head, and this is the same. 60 means 30. So I will show you okay, whether it is in muscle or not in muscle, right? And when you will inject, this, the texture of muscle will let muscle, you know is, if you are in injection or in something. It is in muscle, but you have to confirm this. How you will confirm? This movement shows. Let's look this movement. Yes, it is in the medial plastrominus. Okay, so he has not removed the air. So this the dilution is, is 30 uh, units. 60, so 30 units in total. Small place. And then another part of this muscle. Confirm. Like this. Okay. And so yes. Okay. The smaller child, so total. Five sides I have given. Let's start over here. So, on the medial compartment, it is okay. Now, give me 60 more. 60 means 30. Cap. Look at the The glass is in here. This is This is the, again, one CC syringe. The texture of the muscle. Now, to do the test. Yes, slowly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You have to relink so for other okay. uh, movies so, because this is competing within two yeah. seconds. <laughs> so what distance should the units? You must confirm it is in the muscle. Okay. Okay. Now give me this. This is the soleus texture of the soleus. Okay. Do the best. Okay. Okay. And this. Okay. He was in proper form. You must come from whether the air or not there. Which comes from here and inside here, right? These pronator teres. This is a coroman. Hello, sir. Give me 40 years. 40 is the 20 units. Mm -hmm. Arriving to 15 units. Okay. Now her hand. Okay. Hold it. And so daily is here. Keep pressing. From the proper fold. So here is another child. Six, weeks, six years old. Spastic type media. Little bit Caesar. Adapters temperatures. MS ring tightness, silver stores positive. Order, order. Walk us down. Walk us. Walk up this answer. This is the adapter system. Arrow is not working. 
okay in this child we are injecting again in the propofol sedation hemistring in each hemistring you must test if your syringe is moving and different sites three sites in the medial and i also given sometimes the lateral also this is the medial hemistring you must confirm it is in the muscle and also confirm it is not in the blood vessel be careful this injection should not touch your hand or you should, should not pick prick you on other side and then again on the you must feel the muscle prick and test here yeah, this is the movement with the muscle movement it was not in proper position so i changed the position again a diluted dose lateral then medial medial hemistring and then other side when the remaining dose again i will give the medial hemistring and the grace dose all in the aseptic precautions ketamine or propofol in similar children ga feel the muscle should not be then or it should not be the nerve the gun nerve is very close but it is in the central and deep so here is the movement of the needle syringe which shows you it is in the proper place Yeah, this is the movement very good movement length of the muscle you must inject and i will remain into the repeat here is the calf injection feel the muscle lateral gastrocnemius head inject and the movement it is not in proper place yes it is in proper place i will change as it was not in He is recovering from the ketamine or propofol. I don't remember yet. This was three years back. I tried to locate the Ashok uh, Ashok Johri's video in JPMC, but uh, I could not find. And most of the people give in the supine position. That is good position. To in the pop angle, you inject these muscles and the. But I give in both ways. supine and the in supine benefit is that you can give adductors at the same time do not need to change the position so both get gastrocnemius heads and other side and then further in the soleus i will give similarly this is the medial gastrocnemius head plunger pull to see the blood not in the blood and here is the adductors and the gracilis this is the position for the adductors so from pubic symphysis 3 cm again feel the bulk of the muscle and then from 1 cm down to pubic symphysis because there is a nerve just below 1 cm there is nerve you should not inject in the nerve in tier division of the obturator to pull the plunger see this is not in the blood and given 3 cm area here is another boy now this is question for you 6 year old cerebral palsy birth asphyxia equinus gait mild upper limb sparsity observed 16 month back 
and the watch you show you this look carefully what is happening in the ankle and especially look what is happening at the knee joint when i examined this patient in the supine there was a significant recurvatum knee deformity and he is 6 plus the question is what to do whether to embark to the botox therapy or surgery jawab de de isme botox lagani chahiye ya botox botox aur recurvatum ko kya kare jamil thank you thank you again to the rana saab recurvatum deformity with the equinus it will be 3 months more than 5 month effect what else but his rectus femoris is firing rectus femoris is firing out of the face it should be managed with the botox sir botox sorry beta the curvatum jo deformity ho rahi hai usko kya kare wo to persistently badhti jayegi because it is progress this was the complaint by the parents he is doing equinus and compensate with curvatum and that is increasing so i consider this candidate not for the botox but the gastrocnemius just well view gastrocnemius fractional lenses and he improved significantly on that because he is 6 years and there is no need to continue for the botox it is dynamic contracture but he is developing the recurvatum so this was the candidate for surgery so and uh, these were the videos i am thank you very much and you will find these videos on my youtube and multiple other youtube find, you will also find my facebooks and this is my youtube address you just write anisuddin bhatti you will find the youtube pk one artho jpc you will find this video this lecture again on this and also in slide share so it is open to the discussion and the experts are here rana is here jameel is here i invited many other people maybe they are there and question and answer जमील यू वांट टू ऐड समथिंग सर एक क्वेश्चन था जो फर्स्ट वीडियो देखी थी जिसमें सिल्वर स्कोल टेस्ट पॉजिटिव था उसमें जो है गैस्ट्रोक्रीमियस में लगाया तो व्हाई इन द सोलियस में सोलियस में क्यों हमने बिकॉज लगाया थोड़ा सा गैस्ट्रो जो जा रही थी सिल्वर कोस्ट प्लस 15 डिग्री तक जा रहा है तो वो एडिशनल बेनिफिट होता है आगे चल के फिर वो सोलियस में फैक्टर को डेवलप कर लेगा उससे बेहतर है दैट्स तो उसमें भी लगाना ओके राइट राणा साहब कुछ ऐड कर दे राना दिलावेज नदीम क्वेश्चन टेबल हो गया था क्वेश्चन आई एम हियर सर व्हिच यू हैव स्टार्टेड रिसेंटली ऑन ज़ूम मे गिव्स यू द हेल्थ एंड द स्ट्रेंथ टू डू दिस वेरी गुड सीरीज as you to said first of all you have started the cerebral palsy you have covered a lot but i think in this botox therapy it is very important to have a proper assessment as you have shown in the case just now the third case was why this boy was having recurvatum so your selection of patient is very important the recurvatum and functional scoring system in his cerebral palsy वर्कशॉप यू टू कस्ट टू टेटर एंड अशोक इंजेक्टेड थ्री आर फोर पेशेंट and there was a live de demonstrations but in your cases you have also shown uh, the live demonstrations now if there are any questions i'm i'm willing to answer them yeah questions please uh, yes uh, jameel or uh, anybody else or dr baloch or dr chutoi any questions yes, sir yes yeah, yeah no questions means <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was asking a question regarding difference between differentiate between polio, TMD, and cerebral. Uh, you have emphasized not. जी. अब बहुत अच्छा आ गया मैं आपसे request कर रहा था if you can put the 
slide for those is because that's very important to know as you have elaborated it goes according to the weight of the patients and the depending upon how many muscles are in the each maybe dosage and if you go to refresh the knowledge you can put on that slide then you will say per body weight अब पर बॉडी वेट के हिसाब से फिर आपको कैलकुलेट करना है कि जी कहाँ पे कितना लगाना है अब पर बॉडी वेट पे अगर हम उन्हें तीन सौ यूनिट लगाने टोटल तो आप डिस्ट्रीब्यूट कैसे करें किस में एडक्टर में कितना लगाए तो मैं इसको और जनरल वर्कशॉप जो मैंने सिंगापुर में अटेंड की या खटमंडू में या अशोक आया था तो कुछ चंद्र डिवाइड द बॉडी इन थ्री पार्ट अपर लेमेन हेड वन थर्ड ट्रंक इन वन थर्ड लोअर इज वन थर्ड यू हैव टू गिव सिक्स हंड्रेड यूनिट्स Divide 300 units for the lower limbs, and then divide in the 150 unit, 100 on this side, 100 on this side. In this way, you have to calculate. Per muscle of this patient's, how to detect this muscle is of this kilogram. So this is the dosage, and for a call, I had a slide. Mili thi, jisme ye isi tarah se dosage likhi hui thi, mangar wo maine fir add nahi kar paya, kuch thak gaya tha raat ko. उसको करते वक्त दिस इज दी इंक्रीज एंड डिक्रीज डोजेज किस तरह करें साइड कितनी ये मैक्सिमम डोजेज का हिसाब दिया हुआ है सिक्स सेवन ईयर के जी कोई चिल्ड्रेन के लिए सिक्सटी ईयर्स के बाद अगर के जी ज्यादा होगा तो फिर एडल्ट कंसिडर होगा और उसमें ज्यादा देंगे जो होते हैं सी वी ए के बाद उनको भी मैं लगाता हूँ इंजेक्शन फॉर अपर लिम्स टू रिलीव स्पासिटी अपर लिम्स हमारा एक पेशेंट था जिसमें एडक्टर्स हैमस्ट्रिंग और गैस्ट्रोसोलियस हमने उसको दो सेशन दिए थे थ्री टू फोर मंथ्स के गैप के साथ लेकिन स्टिल उसके बाद वो दोबारा वो रिक्रेस की हो रही थी सॉरी स्पासिस की तो सर व्हेन व्हेन वी शुड गो फॉर द सर्जरी फॉर द रिलीज फोर मंथ के बाद तो वैसे ही वीन ऑफ हो जाता है थ्री मंथ्स पे आस्था 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 वीन ऑफ शुरू थ्री मंथ्स के बाद हमने सेकेंड सेशन दिया सेकंड या थर्ड या इस दौरान आपको असेसमेंट हो जाएगी कि मुझे सर्जरी करनी है या इसी को कंटिन्यू करना है अगर वो चाइल्ड ढाई साल का है तीन साल का है चार साल का तो कंटिन्यू इसी के साथ उनको कन्विंस करें और आजकल फिल्म जो इंजेक्शन दे देते हैं तो और उसको कंटिन्यू करें क्योंकि पाँच साल से पहले सर्जरी अभी हमने उससे भी पूछा था मिलर से वो कहता है पाँच साल से पहले न करो सर्जरी उससे पहले इन बूटा मिला कर वहाँ की दुनिया में तो बूटा ज़्यादा इस्तेमाल होती है ना हमारे पास पैसों का मसला होता है तो वो कहते हैं चलो जी इसको परमानेंट अभी से कर देते हैं तो कोशिश तो बुटॉक्स हमें सिर्फ टाइम टाइम दे रहा है बुटॉक्स जो है ये टाइम भी दे रहा है और आपको असेसमेंट भी दे रहा है ना कि आप यस 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 करनी है बाद में एग्जैक्टली कि उसका रिस्पांस क्या आएगा उसका फायदा क्या हो रहा है तो इसी तरह यस यस डिसीजन इज इन योर हैंड डिपेंड्स ऑन द फाइनेंशियल सपोर्ट डिपेंड्स ऑन द पेशेंट्स की जब थोड़ा बाड़ी में लता है वो हर 3 महीने के पास है कब मैं कहां से आऊं और वो पांच साल का भी दस तो जैसे ये मैंने बच्चा दिखाया रिकर्वेटम वाला अब इसमें मैं क्या इंतजार करूँ वो तो नीज का खराब हो रहा है और उसको मैं पांच साल तक और लगाऊं तो फिर वो बीच में जो पीरियड होता है उसमें फिर वो रिकर्वेटम हो जाएगा तो बेहतर यही है कि एक सिस्टर वेल्पी कर दो गैस्ट्रोनिमस लेंथनिंग फ्रैक्शनल और देन यू विल फाइंड के ही विल बी ओके एंड परमानेंट ओके तो फिर उसको ब्रेसिंग रात के टाइम पे दे दो रात को क्योंकि मसल रेस हो जाती है फुट ड्राप होता है और बाकी दिन के टाइम पे तो वो चलता फिरता है मसल एक्टिव होती है वो करते रहे हमारे पास ये प्रॉब्लम सबसे ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम जो इफेक्टिवनेस कम होती है इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ लेक ऑफ रिहेबिलिटेशन रिहेबिलिटेशन सिर्फ फिजियोथेरापी नहीं है देर इज रेक्यूपेशनल फिजियोथेरापी एज वेल तो रिहेबिलिटेशन मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट रिहेबिलिटेशन वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट So that is basically rehabilitation's role is very. Our past the failures, the club for the maybe this maybe we can talk about lack of rehabilitation. For today's class, we have the best thing available rehabilitation. So the practice. Right. But people go. Right. Right. Convince them to do it. That role, which is necessary, if they don't do it, then it will be a failure. So this is that's why this is that's why this is that's why this is that's why During this period, a targeted therapy group was implemented to stretch the shattered muscle, stiff joint, and improve the weak muscles. Mm -hmm. This is very important. If we don't do this, then it will be difficult. I am really grateful to my faculty, Dr. Dilawar Nadi, Mabasa Mehdi, Dr. Ali Ali, 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 Dr.
and uh, others may be there who don't know who and here is the amin chinai sir uh, kuch uh, bolenge sir assalam alaikum thank you sir bahut very nice talk very informative bahut uh, informative talk thi sir main ek repeat karne ke liye jo aapne ki hai aapne do se ke isme आप जिस रोज इंजेक्शन लगाते हैं उस रोज के आप फिर इन लोगों को कास्ट दे देते हैं इन बच्चों को या आप डायरेक्ट फिजियोथेरेपी उसी दिन शुरू करते हैं सर मैं कोशिश करता हूं कि उनको प्लास्टर एक हफ्ते के लगाऊं क्योंकि जो इंजेक्शन के बाद हेमेटोमा इरिटेबिलिटी होती है ना वो कम हो जाती है तो उससे एक बच्चा जो है ना फर्दर फिजियोथेरेपी जब कराता है ना उसको बेनिफिट होता है अगर आप इंजेक्शन के बाद दूसरे दिन उनको कराएं तो आप खुद फील करें उनके हाथ लगा के ना काफ मसल को थोड़े छोटे से उस पे बम्प्स बने होते हैं अब वो बम्प्स बड़े इरिटेबल होते हैं या तो फिर उनको कहें कि एक हफ्ते तक आपको पेना डाल भी देते रहे इसको कोल्ड स्पंजिंग भी करते रहे ये रिड्यूस होता है फिर फिजियोथेरापी करो मगर स्ट्रेच मेंटेन करना है अगर आप स्ट्रेच मेंटेन नहीं करोगे ए एफ ओ के साथ तो फिर वो प्रॉब्लम वापस वो कंट्रेचर डेवलप होगी क्योंकि वो जो इरिटेबिलिटी है उसका भी कंट्रेचर बनेगा और उसका स्पास्टी भी बढ़ेगी तो इसीलिए मैं सर कोशिश करता हूँ कि प्लास्टर लगा एक हफ्ते कम से कम ठीक है सर थैंक यू हेलो कैन आई टॉक टू या सर Uh, uh, do you find any cases of yes? Do you find do you have any cases of buffalinin resistance? Uh, and uh, the, uh, I mean, in other words, what's your failure rate uh, in these cases when you inject uh, buffalinin? Uh, repeat that. Uh, I mean, do, do you have do you have any cases of uh, your buffalinin failure? Are in other words, botulinum resistance. Uh, I, 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 resistance. You love me. I will not use it. Selection criteria. Me. Because if selection criteria, it is a, a static temperature. It means it is resistant. Static temperature. No, no, no. I, 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 I didn't mean that. I mean when you inject it once or twice, do you have any cases of resistance afterwards? Like it's a drug. And uh, you know, uh, do you do you get any patients who, who get resistant who do who don't improve afterwards after your second or third injection? Do you get any cases like that, or is it? Sometimes, elder children, we find one or two cases when there is a no response. Maybe uh, so the reason okay, is when static temperature is missing, hoga, and it has not improved. So these patient already written here. Patient who has no response considered for the surgery. And these uh, sites of injection that you have actually elaborated that these are the sites. Are they anatomically proven or are they just a guess? That they are anatomical proven. Most of the people affluent country they use the ultrasound to operation theater available hota hai. Zia din mein mere paas available hai. Some people use with the EMG for perfection. जहाँ पे वो लॉन्ग टर्म थेरापी देना चाहते हैं जहाँ पे सर्जरी नहीं करना चाहते न्यू स्प्राउट जो जम बनते हैं जब तीन महीने चार महीने पूरे हो जाते हैं तो वापस वो बन जाते हैं इसीलिए वो वापस वो जो 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 डैमेज हुए थे वो दोबारा नहीं बनते नए स्प्राउट्स बनते हैं तो नए स्प्राउट्स बनते हैं तो वो दोबारा वो कर लेते हैं इसीलिए रिपीटेड ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट की जरूरत होती है एंड इट इज प्रूवन थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड थैंक्स वेरी मच फॉर द टॉक इट वाज अ वेरी नाइस टॉक अ वेरी नाइस टॉक थैंक यू सर अमीन जिनाद अम नहीं आई थिंक इट इट वाज अ वेरी नाइस टॉक सर आपने सब कवर कर लिए हैं एस्पेक्ट डोजेस कवर किया इंडिकेशंस इट कवर किए हैं और वीडियोस बड़ी अच्छी थी खूबसूरत वीडियोस थी जिसमें एग्जैक्ट साइट वो किया था आई थिंक इट वाज अ वेरी वेरी नाइस टॉक सर सर नेक्स्ट टॉप जो है गेट डिसऑर्डर्स के ऊपर है गेट डिसऑर्डर एनालिसिस जो इसी प्लेटफार्म से करूंगा और फिर भी जो वेबिनार हमारी होगी क्लब फूड की गाइडलाइन उसको बहुत जरूरी है काम करना दो लेक्चर हम ले लेंगे एक आप ले लीजिएगा मैं ले लूंगा और इनशाला हम दोनों डिसाइड कर लेते हैं उसको भी कर लेंगे इसको भी थैंक यू वेरी मच टू एवरीवन बार माय फैकल्टी बार माय सर सर एक क्वेश्चन था कि फिजियोथेरेपी कितनी देर के लिए दिन में करनी होती है सर 
तीन दिन में तो कोई तीन दफा तो कोई नहीं करा एक ही दफा प्रॉपर करो और मदर्स को ट्रेंड करें उनको बोलो जी इन मदर्स को ट्रेंड करो कि हफ्ते में दो दिन तुम्हारे पास आए चार दिन वो खुद करें यहाँ हमारे सिस्टम में ये डेली नहीं जा सकते इसीलिए मैं तो कहता हूँ कि दो दिन जाए सीखें अंडरस्टैंड करें और बाकी दिन खुद करें कोई भी अफोर्डिंग बंदा भी पाकिस्तान में नहीं कर सकता डेली जाके फिजियोथेरापी क्योंकि वो खुद जब जा रहा है या उसकी मदर भी जा रही है तो सारा घर डिस्टर्ब हो रहा है इसीलिए होम प्रोग्राम्स आर अवेलेबल और आजकल तो नेट पर अलहमदिल्ला बहुत कुछ अवेलेबल सर सॉरी सर जैसे टेंडर एटलीस्ट की वो है टाइटनेस तो कितनी देर के लिए हम उसकी स्ट्रेचिंग करेंगे 30 मिनट्स के लिए 5 मिनट्स के लिए 1 मिनट कितनी देर के लिए फिक्स उस टाइम ड्यूरेशन जितना कंफर्टेबल हो उतना कर ले 5 मिनट 2 मिनट भी 5 मिनट भी काफी है और उसके बाद नाइट में ब्रेस जरूर लगाएं ओके थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच तो थैंक यू वेरी मच जी सर जी सर व्हाट्स द कॉस्ट व्हाट्स द कॉस्ट ऑफ द इंजेक्शन कॉस्ट ऑफ इंजेक्शन अभी थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच एवरी वन